Today we are going to talk about the importance of magic text. Magic text is vital to creating an app in Adalo, and it allows you as the maker to display dynamic information from the database inside a live app. To show you what would happen if you didn't use magic text, I have created an app example. Let's say you are in HR for your business and you've got a list of employees here. There are six employees, they're great employees. And within each employee, you can click on somebody's name and you're taken to their profile page. And you can see that Jackson here is a marketing coordinator. You can see a little bio about him and all of the rest of the stuff here. The same thing is true for Noah Thompson. You can see his information here and learn more about him. This is great. What a great little app to tell you about your employees. Now, if I come back inside the Adalo Builder, you can see how I set this app up. Without magic text, you would need to create a screen where each of your employees are listed out, just like you see here with their information. And then you would need to create individual screens for each employee. So as you can see, I created six screens, one for each of my six employees. This took me a long time to do. It was very tedious. I had to make sure that I was transcribing information correctly, and it was pretty challenging to link all the screens up appropriately. It was just a lot of work. What's nice in Adalo is we've got this concept of magic text. In fact, I have the exact same app here with these two screens that you just saw before, it will look the exact same. So let's take you through what this will look like. First, I need to change this screen to the welcome and home screen. And that ensures that my app is going to show up on this screen first. So let's go ahead and click view app. And now you can see we've got our list of employees just like we had before. And when I click on each individual employee, their information shows up here. I can go and click on another employee. And again, their information is going to show up here. The difference being that there are two screens here and in the above example, I had to create seven different screens to get the same result. Not only that, but if I was trying to make this app as a one by one employee basis, that means that every single time my company hires a new employee, I would need to add their name to this list. I would need to create a new screen for them. I would need to link that screen and I would need to make sure that all of their information was correct. Additionally, it also means that you can't pull any other information from the database because you're not using the dynamic information in the way that you're supposed to in an app. Believe it or not, I see this pretty frequently inside of Adalo. And so again, if you don't understand magic text, you're missing out on so much functionality that's very rich. And so instead, we would like to see you use something that looks like this. I won't lie, when I first started building in Adalo, I honestly thought that I had to go and make hundreds of screens if I had hundreds of users. That's clearly not how you have to make it. And so when I found out the concept of magic text and I actually took the time to learn it and I realized you can make an app like this, first off, I was blown away. And second, I thought this concept is aptly named. This is magic. So even though this is a really complex subject, it's vital. And quite honestly, Adalo has really simplified what you need to know and how to do this process. And so I'm going to show you how. All right, let's talk about where you can use magic text. First, you use magic text inside of various different components. So here we've got a list component and this list component is made up of several different pieces of text and an image component. Here you can see that this is magic text because it's in a red chip. The difference here is if you look at this text component, you can see that the word is spelled out and that means it's static text. It will remain the same because it's not connected to our database. You can also use magic text inside of various actions. So here we've got an update user action. And what we're saying is once somebody hits this edit button, we want to change their name in the database to be user full name. 
so the current name of the user, and then put has been edited to the end. You can click magic text through here and select current user, their full name, and then again, place this static text next to it. Magic text can also be used within filters. So if we add a custom filter here, we can say to exclude the email of the person who has the same email address as the logged in user. So again, here you can see this is a dynamic property that is coming from the database. And so it's kind of like a magic text concept. Magic text can also be used in formulas and conditional actions. It's really important to understand what happens when you're utilizing magic text. And so here in this app, a great example is right here. Here is how the text looks when you're creating a static app with no dynamic information from the database. You can see the image of the person in the list. You can see their name, their email, and the same thing is true over here on their detail screen. When you're utilizing magic text, you actually don't have to put all of that information out. Instead, each one of the chips that you have in magic text is going to showcase here. So in this example, I'm saying, I would like to show the full name of my employee, and that is the property name in the collection. Similarly, here in the email, I'm saying, pull the email address that's in the database, that is associated with this user. Same thing with the image here. So again, it doesn't look like there's any data in your app. It just looks like you've got a list that says full name over and over again, but that's not true. When you actually go into preview your app, you see the data just like we saw before. Another thing to take note is that when you're creating a list, it doesn't actually showcase every single employee that is in my database. Instead, you typically see that there's three records and they kind of gray out here in order to show this list is continuing. There's more items in this list. And so that's just important to note that you're not going to get the same number of magic text areas to fill out as what is in your collection. It just is a placeholder. All right, let's go ahead and look at a different app example to learn a little bit more about magic text. If you wanted to follow along here, I have an app that comes from our feature template library. To access the feature template library, you can go down here in your editor and go ahead and click add feature template and search for the workout assignment feature template. Once you assign that, you're going to go ahead and see that all of these screens have been added to your app and you can follow along from there. Here I am going to select a piece of magic text that comes on our workout day screen. And I'm going to show you exactly how it is set up. When you select name here, you can see that it is exercise name. That's what it's saying. But when I go ahead and click on my magic text here, I can see that there's several different things. This is maybe a little bit overwhelming to look at. This is what we call our flyout menu. The way that I like to read our flyout menu is that these are your collections. So we've got a collection called assigned exercise. We've got workout days collection. We've got a workouts collection. And when you go down into the next level here in this flyout menu, you can see that these are the various properties in our collection. And then below this divider, you've got the relationship properties that you can see that are attached to this collection. And then you go one level deeper and these are the properties that are associated with the workout days collection. If you need a refresher on relationships, I've got a video for you and you can check that out in this playlist. I definitely rec recommend learning as much as you can about relationships because it's really gonna help with the concept of magic text. Anyways, back to magic text. When we're looking at these, you can notice that there are two different colors that show up. This gray means that nothing can be selected, meaning that's not an option for magic text. 
As soon as I go over into this flyout menu, I can actually select any of these, let's say name. And now you can see that the magic text is going to include the assigned exercise name. I don't actually want that, so I will delete this. But to understand the concept, it's really important to know that gray means you cannot select it for magic text. Red means that you can. All right, let's talk about what magic text looks like when you're in different areas of Adalo. When you're in the side panel, this is what we call the side panel. Let's say we went ahead and, and selected this name. Here you can see workout name and the various things that you can do inside of magic text and formatting is going to be here when you click this edit button. In the case of a text property, there's really not a whole lot you can do, but you can see the flow of data. So we're choosing the current workout name. Basically what this is saying is that in our workout collection, there is a property called name, and this is what we want to display here. It gets a little bit different here when we're using a number property. And so when we select this number property, we actually can see how the data flows again, but we're able to see that we can change the number format to whatever we want. If you want a refresher on data types and why this magic text menu is different for different data types, I definitely recommend checking out our video on data types that we offer here at Adalo. On our admin edit workout page, we have a button down here called save and continue. And when I select this, I can see that there is an update workout action. Similar to my update action in my previous app example, you can see that there are lots of different ways that magic text is being used to update these properties. Basically, this is a form saying you have this workout, but we want to edit some of the information in here. And so we're using magic text to pull the information that's inside each one of these um, inputs or form inputs, however you wanna think about them. And now we want to put them inside of our database. And so magic text is used for that. If you're using one of our out of the box forms, so again, this is a custom form so you'll need to use these magic text properties in order to update things. But if you're using one of our out of the box forms, you actually don't need to use magic text because we've just set it up on the back end that everything is going to work how you need it to work. It's very nice, um, but sometimes you need a little bit of extra customization and we get that too. If we go ahead and look at magic text in image form, we can actually see that instead of it showing up as a red chip, it's showing up as a drop down. And you can see that when we hover over this image, we actually get the whole path of the data flow. So in this image specifically, we're saying that there is the current assigned exercise. So that is a collection has a relationship with the collection exercise an exercise has a property that is image, and we want to display that image here. Again, this isn't a chip, and instead it is a drop down. And now you can see this is actually the path that we just talked about. All right, let's talk about magic text inside the builder. We'll start with images. So when you're utilizing magic text, in an image, you're gonna see this grayscale image with the little sparkles here that represent Adalo. And that means that this image is utilizing magic text. Let's see if there's another image in this app that isn't using magic text. I don't believe there is one. Actually, here you go. Right here, this is an image that is not using magic text, which means that the image is going to show up inside your editor. So you know that this is not a dynamic image that's being pulled from the database. Another thing to know about magic text is that text inherits the name of the property that you're showing. So right now it says workout name. And the reason that it doesn't say workout name in the builder 
is because we're actually just showing the property name from the workout collection. Here, this is static text, and you can see it just says workouts. So to know the difference between static text and magic text is to know kind of what's showing up on your screen. Another thing that can get a little bit confusing when it comes to magic text is that sometimes the information in our database is actually much larger than what shows up here on the screen. For example, in this area, our short description for any of our workouts is not actually going to only be two words. It could be way longer than that. It could be three lines. And so with magic text, the information that comes from the database may grow or expand your design just depending on how much data there actually is to display. So if you have text that's 20 lines or sentences, that's actually going to move your design and your design will grow and shape around that information. All right, let's look at magic text in a live app. So again, if we look at this app, we can see that there are lots of grayscale images. There are lots of things that just say name or short description. There's really not a lot of information. It kind of feels incomplete. But when we go ahead and we view this app, we're gonna see that everything is working really wonderfully. All right, and here's our live app. So this is the magic of magic text that I was talking about. Right now you can see that all of our images are showing up, that each item in this list actually has a different description, has a different name, um, a category that it belongs to, and even that we've got more than four workouts inside this one list. When I was inside the builder, it actually looked like we only had four exercises. So again, magic text really feels like magic when you use it. It ties our back end with our front end to make an app. This is how you display the data in your database. And the vessels for it are our components like images or text or list. One thing I forgot to mention is there are some components that adopt magic text properties immediately. So if we go over here and we add a blank screen, we can actually see when I add a simple list here and I tell Adalo, this list is a list of, let's say, assigned exercises, you can see that now assigned exercise name got placed here. And even when I click inside of this to the title area, you can see that magic text was inserted. There are some properties that work like this, but not all. And so just pay attention to what you're placing in Adalo and what things need to be updated. Like for example, subtitle is going to need to be updated here. All right, that's all I have on magic text today. In the next video, we're going to be talking about what logged in user and current user mean. And so that's another important thing to understand when it comes to magic text. So be on the lookout for that video. Thank you.